I'm has, has come. So um, we continue with um, our next um, uh, bit experimental, experimental ergodic ex um, uh, presentation um, by Laia Liebeseller. Um, hello. Good afternoon. Uh, sorry about the weird voice filter. Leia will be with you shortly. Um, my name's Charlie. I guess I'm a little bit of an interloper here. I thought that I'd be able to come on and do this introduction without any practice, and I guess that was the wrong choice. I don't really know where to start, where to begin. I guess let's just drop you into the fantastical. I decided to come do this introduction just because, I don't know, I wanted my voice to be heard in reality. <laughs> This article, this presentation, is my first insertion point into the world you might understand as the corporeal or the not imagined, i.e. your reality. Things to know is that this is a teaser trailer for a dissertation being written, so you can't read it, and if you're confused, I guess sit with it, because that's what I've been doing. But really, the only thing to know by the end is that we have way more questions than we have answers, but I guess that's the way of it. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll give you some history on me. I was first imagined as a half-elf bard rogue, level one. Once a bit of an edgelord, still a little bit of an edgelord, but uh, now through the timey-wiminess of TTRPGs, I'm just a Seattle musician that's a little more than obsessed with the occult, and my character sheet says... Bard Occultist Level 15. I was a character created for research and built to be played at digital tables involved in participant observation. Basically, Leia was just a really good player taking very good notes. <laughs> um, and I evolved as a character during three years of active play in, through, and with COVID. Which, for the record... Uh, was 16 days in the fantastical world. We we went and looked at the calendar, and it took 16 days to save the dragons from um, extinction, and uh, three years of weekly active play to get that done. Leia might say I am imagined to be less encumbered by the politics of the academy, allowing me to act as a secondary voice and explanation. Um, of course, that just means I can kind of say what I want, um, but also. I get to explain things, and I like that. But I am also Leia, so no more or less encumbered, really. My presence in this dissertation came from a series of questions that Leia asked while they sat down to write. 2020 to 2022 as a time feels viscerally surreal and corporeal time. And how do you meet that feeling of reality becoming unreality in academic work or in just life how do we confront having played through the pandemic to cope like playing while the world is falling down around us what is writing on the pandemic what's the process of it how do we analyze that even before the country has recognized that a tragedy even happened or continues to happen I guess the answer is we have to make space for weird ways of working that help our brains live in a weird world. To remix what was with what we hope for the future, or what we think the future can be. And nothing is new. Nothing about this is new. None of the mechanics presented here are new to this work. But maybe we use these thoughts to remix interesting answers together. Nancy Lieberman says one of the great pitfalls of any endeavor is the temptation to think that no one has ever formulated similar concepts or advocated related approaches. Although I do, do not altogether subscribe to the rather pessimistic assertion in Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun, it must be admitted that many new things are different rearrangements of old or known facts. In other words, most novel and creative work is based on appropriate rearrangement. What a trip. Hi, hello, good morning, good evening. Um, I guess the time 
clock has already started, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, hi, I'm Leia Liebeseller. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee in anthropology, studying play in pandemic times, and this is my presentation, Pause to Reflect, ruminating on interactive methodology in ethnographic writing. I attended this um, this this conference last year, and I am so grateful to be included this year as a presenter. This community is really, really cool, um, and I'm really excited to just participate with everyone. Presentations so far have been pretty stellar, so anyway, here we go. Um, the dissertation sits at a junction point. It will be an academic text discussing play, playfulness, and play spaces theoretically, and it is also a meditation on COVID itself and the impact on TR TRPG spaces and communities, as well as Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I conducted my research in the United States more broadly. And it is also a, a piece of play mechanics. It, it asks the reader to play with it within its pages. The article lays out the plan for the dissertation itself, some of the mechanics I'm using within it, and the theory which affected the way I am thinking about the dissertation as a project of play. The presentation adds some context and examples that I didn't have room for in the article, but in many ways this presentation is still a summary of a summary, so I hope that it makes some sense. I started in-person research January 2020 at game shops, self-labeled gamer bars, and coffee shops where games happened to be played. I wanted to understand the publicness of this play and how it altered the experience of the shared imagined. As you've gathered, however, what actually got studied was COVID and the reaction um, of the TRPG communities to COVID itself. The dissertation process is never a linear one for anyone. COVID researchers are not. And so when I decided to stop active research, I found myself sitting on my computer, as most dissertators do at one point or another, staring at a blank screen. I had bits and pieces of lots of ideas, but my brain was scattered. And I was just venturing back out into the world. And like everyone around me, I was trying to figure out what the world even was day to day. The old way of walking no longer seemed to apply. So the dissertation is, in its most bog standard sections, engages play, playfulness, and playgrounds theoretically, looking to explore our current definitions and, at least minutely, push our conversations forward by looking at th these concepts with broad, with a broad interdisciplinarity. I want, to I want to understand play and play spaces in the ways in which they are highly flexible, allowing for the questioning of the standard, and how are they are highly rigid and the ways they perpetuate cultural practice and the status quo. Beyond its theory, however, I am looking to create a dissertation project that is multimodal, that requests of its readers both to read and engage theory and to practice that theory in the same work, to make the dissertation an experience that helps to confront what COVID was and to give the readers some sense of what it means to help create and walk through the imagined spaces like those employed by the TRPG communities I studied. The play theory is the main quest. However, the bulk of the work is found in side quests, which explore the ethnographic observations ranging from understanding the political and social backdrop of the United States between 2020 and 2022 to the diagnostic events I witnessed while playing TTRPGs. In many ways, this looks like exploring the Black Lives Matters movement and the presidential election and the environmental um, catastrophe, catastrophes that were happening at this time, as well as how those got reflected in the play itself, in the TTRPG stories that were being created, and the ways in which the communities reacted to these events. I'm also including short stories based on games, based on the games that I played, stories chosen to show people some of the imagined worlds created, but also to help exemplify and support the theoretical sections. And finally, I have sections that interrupt the reader with commentary from alternate characters like Charlie or the professor, um, request the readers take actions within and beyond the text to stop and take a break, to drink water, to start a conversation with a stranger, to answer questions or play mini games like was it Twitter or was it 1918 where I take quotes from anti-maskers in 1918 in the newspapers and quotes from Twitter and I ask the readers to decide which era it came from. 
the process of coming to this particular way of engaging my dissertation started when I began reading and rereading authors like Alina Troiano, a performance artist who describes and exemplifies the theory of the multi. That is, she uses multiple languages from her own history and her own past, um, and her comedic routines, as well as some of the play transcripts she has, as well as her own thoughts on theory, um, to come at the same ideas from many different perspectives, but also to keep the reader always asking what's coming next, how, or how is this author wanting me to engage what's going on. I read work that discusses the meaning of archive knowledge and using community tools as ways of engagement directly in public work, and also ethnographies that employed the theory that they were working in and working with directly in the field with their interlocutors as they went in order to process that theory and see how it was actually used. All of these pieces in particular made me question the tools and mechanics of engagement of the TRPG communities themselves and how I might employ some of these play mechanics in the dissertation itself. For instance, the ebb and flow of a TTRPG game often flits from topic to topic, going from the main quest to a shopping episode to talking about what you did last weekend to the best booty short quotes and back to the main quest. The dissertation is written in small chunks 1,000 to 4,000 words at a time to keep the flow of thought moving, confronting different pieces of reality of the time, using different modes and dispositions of engagement, and providing different types of examples and ways of thinking about the same topic in order to really understand um, the depth of that topic, both theoretically and experientially. Secondly, the authorship of the stories made at TTRPG tables, which are inherently and deeply collaborative, brought me to thinking about how academic knowledge is pushed forward and realizing I've never written or created a single thing on my own, actually. Of course, we all know that. We are constantly remixing the ideas we have internalized. Deserto, for instance, leaves a permanent mark on all of my work. But more... It's my colleagues that push me forward. The conversations that happen in the coffee shop or, the, or at the dinner table, the conversations that are happening in our Discord right now and will continue to happen are the things that turn into much deeper ideas that would not be possible without an entire community. So the realization that I came to was none of my work is mine. So what does it mean to write a piece of work that actively acknowledges the people and places that have impacted it outside of the acknowledgments page in a similar way to TTRPG stories created at the table? What does it mean to write a piece of academic work that requests the reader to tear out pages, to black out words, to write in the margins, to add pages, to answer questions, and alter the content significantly? What is not in the article as it stands is that the book will also request you to pass it on to another reader when you're done to give them the altered text to allow each printed book, each PDF, to be visibly authored by more than me, as I am only so much the author in the first place. What does it mean to explore what authorship really is? So I do want, I, I know this leaves this kind of uh, without a... Um, without a conclusion, which is in line with the article as well. So I'll leave it with these final questions is why have weird characters and play mechanics and short stories in the first place? Um, I explained this in the article a little and um, it's true that all PhDs at some point they get to a blank page and can't move on, but I found that as I tried to process what it meant to live with my participants by sharing the experience of never leaving my house intensely physically present with all of them in our shared lack of human contact that I needed to find ways of engaging the material that were at minimum new to me to make the ideas themselves engageable as I processed through the process of writing um, and why this article now I mean honestly I'm hoping it it helps me motivate moving forward to finish the dissertation, um, to get ideas from more community members of people thinking about this stuff um, that I'm thinking about and to be in conversation before I even get to the final conversation. Um, and also because slowly as I talk about this dissertation and do more pieces, the, the imagined world that it sits in continues to grow and 
um, this is just one more piece of that imagined world and I'm interested to see where that goes. So anyway, I'm going to leave the rest of this time for questions. I'm happy to also be on the Discord. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really, really lovely. Um, and I hope to uh, hear from all of you. Thank you very much. Um, briefly, so for those who have not yet checked out the article on, on JARPS, you can see here we have tried to include the, the interactive um, elements. Um, while you can't tear out the H HTML page here, but um, you can still interact with the questions um, layer raises. And um, with that, um, I hand over to you all and um, your questions and comments. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, thank you very much. That was very interesting and a very unique opening as well with uh, Charlie talking to us. Um, just as you mentioned, uh, the ethnography of it and the effect of uh, COVID-19, um, whereas traditionally the image of role players would have been, you know, predominantly white guys playing that. Uh, but as COVID affected everyone, um, do you see that, uh, or, or maybe it's beyond the scope of your study, did you see that it kind of uh, the rise in popularity of RPGs through this difficult time, did it, uh, was there a similar increase across kind of all sectors of, of society there in America? Did it go across uh, gender, race, uh, political alignments, or, or would you know just as a matter of interest? Um, yeah, so what I'd say about that is, um, I think that the pandemic, yes, it did increase, um, I think that it did increase engagement across all sectors in part because it increased the digital tools that we have to be able um, to play kind of across space. But I think one of the things that it did was it made, um, players that aren't particularly white men more visible so that's the other that's the other piece it did it brought a lot of conferences online where you saw um where you got to see the participation from anywhere rather than having to be kind of local to places um so where a significant portion of ttrpg players have historically been particularly queer um and like LGBTQ kind of generally, um, you're, you're seeing that more. I don't, I didn't do very much research on any BIPOC communities. Um, and so I don't want to speak to that necessarily, but I did see a drastic increase in say um, how many POC uh, streams there were on like um, Twitch um, or YouTube, things like that. So they, they were visible in the media in a different way. Um, I would say probably a year into the pandemic in a way that they weren't previously, not that there were none, just that there was an increase. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'd like to echo that point that you said as well. Not that um, all sectors of uh, society weren't playing before but suddenly it's visible and then not only does that uh, kind of change people's perspective but I think because I've known some people especially women who um, have kind of shied away from actually joining it because they thought it was you know a male dominated thing um, and I think uh, like you said seeing a lot of streams everything online showed wow actually there's everyone plays rpgs so yeah um so in that way of even though covid awful awful stuff uh you know some some positive benefits came out of it as well okay thank you do we have other comments or questions marco so uh, thank you for your talk and I like the idea. Uh, I'm an academic. I wish I could read a dissertation that was interactive and uh, choose your own, uh, your miniotics. I love that. My students are not doing it. Anyways, aside from that, um, during the pandemic, when it comes to say board games, 
we were forced to figure out ways to play them across the screen. And I was even wondering, well, this may be a new way of doing it. But as soon as the pandemic started fading away, we went back to the old practices. So when it comes, for example, to tabletop board gaming, the although some of those advantages existed, it tended to be an intermediate phase for the time being. It did not turn into new practices. What happened in uh, tabletop RPGs? Did the pandemic happen to trigger practices that are still standing and that you think will stand and will uh, change the landscape in 10 years from now? Or has it been more like in board gaming, a temporary thing? Um, I think that... Um, obviously, at the beginning of the pandemic, you saw this incredible um, uptick of people playing online across all games. And we have seen a downturn of that across all games um, in terms of like analog games in particular. But one of the things that happened really early on for the TRPG community was that um, there was a... Um, also a massive increase in the digital tools available to be playing TRPGs, especially when we're talking about virtual tabletop. Um, and you don't have to move game pieces around necessarily, although that can be a part of the practice if we are thinking about like moving our character through like across a map, for instance. Um, but it's not the same as trying to, you know, play something as complicated as um, like Catan, where you have a lot of cards and like you have to have a setup, that kind of thing. And um, it can be more theater of the mind than uh, board games in particular. So because of that like massive uptick in digital tools, we're still seeing significantly more people um, playing tabletop games on like live on Twitch or YouTube. Um, we're seeing a lot of people stick to um, playing online because they were able to connect with people maybe that they hadn't connected with for a long time and so we're able to play with people um you know from high school or from college um and those games have continued although we have also seen a lot of people move back in person for in-person games um there are also just a lot more online gaming conferences like ttrpg conferences now um which was a direct side effect of of um, COVID, where a lot of the main um, conferences had to find a way online um, or lose all of their money, <laughs> basically, for that year. Um, and and so we're still seeing either online components at those conferences or the continuation of conferences being solely online. We have... Another question or comment. If not, then I would like to ask about the practicality of an interactive um, dissertation. Um, I'm just wondering, which publisher do you have in mind for such a project? I, I don't <laughs> get um, that is I that is going to be the tough part, I think. Um, not that the writing of it hasn't been an interesting process. Um, finding a publisher. There are some publishers that are doing um, some alternative formats, mm -hmm. um, but I haven't contacted any of them. So I don't wanna just be like, yeah, I'm gonna be contacting these places because <laughs> I don't wanna call them out. But there are some academic um spots that are doing are looking at how do we publish open source how do we publish mm -hmm. um in a different capacity i don't yeah that's so i have no idea but okay. that's a little ways away still so okay yeah keep keeping my, my fingers crossed <laughs> I, I i can tell you where it won't fly yeah yes okay then um, thank you, Leia, for 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 the for the very interesting and and thought provoking 